is a cold, rainy night, and a sedan has crashed into a tree near a graveyard, and an EMT named Jack is trying to resurrect a teenage boy, zapping him a bunch of times with the electric current zappy thing, but it isn't working. The boy is dead. But as Jack is walking away, he sees movement from the corner of his eye, and turns around to see this random guy making a back and forth motion with his hand over the dead body. Jack yells at the guy to get away, and they run away. Suddenly, the boy becomes alive and starts coughing, as if he had just watched a 30 second ad to revive himself for free. Then we are introduced to Jessica, the main character, who is in a hospital, mopping the floor, and we learn that Jessica doesn't like to be noticed, and so doesn't talk to anyone as she mops the hospital floor of the children's medical wing after school. Then we learn about this random kid named Brian, who was in the children's medical wing, who used to be very sick, but is now miraculously better for no apparent reason, but nobody questions it. But then his mum notices these weird silver flakes on him, and the mum asks the doctor what it is, but the doctors have no idea, but tell her that they'll get someone to clean it up. And I don't know what Brian's mum was thinking they were going to use, but she must have thought they were going to use toilet bowl cleaner to remove the silver flakes or something, because she begs them not to use any chemicals that will kill her son. It's just silver flakes, they're probably just going to use a dustpan and sweep it off or something. Anyway, then we are introduced to two new characters, Nurse Macy and her assistant, Colin, who are talking to each other. Damn, Jessica's weird, she looks emo. Well, I bet you were weird when you were 14. No, I actually talk to people. Like my crack, dear. <laughs> they turn around. A rusty tin can is lying on the ground. The book then cuts to Jessica, who is sitting on a pew in the empty hospital chapel, holding a silver pendant. The pendant was once a whole heart, but is now much thinner, with rough scratches on it. We find out that she was the random guy at the crash site, and she was the one who revived the dead boy, but that she is getting frailer every day. She used to always smile, talk to people, wear nice clothes, and hang out with all the cool people. But now, she only smiles if she has to. So basically your average 14 year old white girl. Jessica then, realising no one is looking, leaves the chapel and enters the room of a sleeping little boy, before pulling out her knife and pendant, and scraping silver flakes all over him. The next day, Jessica is in science and engineering class at school, contemplating life and how she used to have a family but no longer does because she made the wrong choice and decided to give it all up. Suddenly, the teacher tells everyone to choose their partners for a project, but Jessica, who wasn't paying attention, has no idea what she is talking about. That's when this hot new kid named Robert randomly spawns in and asks her if she wants to be project partners. And Jessica, being a loner who has no friends, agrees, finding out she has to build a robot. After school, Jessica and Robert are talking about the project. Let's go to the junkyard after school to gather some mats for our build. No. What? Bye! Jessica then goes home, and we found out she lives in a small mausoleum in a cemetery. The book then cuts to Jessica, who is now back at the hospital, mopping the floor, again. Slowly, she turns around. A rusted fork has appeared on the ground.